everyone, and welcome to our latest Celebrity Soft Pants Stitch In interview. We are very excited that you're here. I'm Pam from the Stitch TV Show. I'm joined by my co-host, Lynn. Hello, everyone. And we are very excited to be talking to illustrious modern quilter and friend of ours, Krista Watson. Hey, guys. You know what? I have to say, I took the soft pants, like, very literally. I am literally in the softest pants I own because I just got back from teaching out of town this weekend and I literally have no clean clothes except t-shirts and sweatpants. So I love that I'm meeting the dress code. It's totally comfortable. It's awesome. Absolutely. Mine are I about think, a 10% spandex. I yeah. think I think it's a standard, uh, you know, fabric requirement for sewing rooms. Exactly. I know. And that's why I'm glad that like the TV, you can only see part of me. So you cannot see my yeah. soft pants that don't match my shirt, <laughs> but they're comfy. <laughs> So, Krista, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and, and what you do in the quilting world? Okay, sure. I've been uh, quilting for over 20 years now, I think about 24. And um, I started off making mostly traditional quilts, and then I kind of stumbled into modern quilting about 2012, 2013. And I went to the first quilt con back then, and I basically came home like so inspired. Like, I wanted to quit making traditional quilts, I only wanted to make modern quilts. And now I kind of do a little of both. I do more like the modern traditional where they'll appeal to traditional quilters because I do a lot of block based quilts, but then I try to use the really fun, bright fabrics and like the asymmetry and the negative space of the modern quilting. And so it's kind of like I have one foot in both worlds, but I just love it and it's, it's re-energized me. Um, so I, I've been teaching like forever and then I started going on the road a couple years ago and writing books and patterns and teaching at shows and things like that um, because I didn't have enough friends in Las Vegas and I needed more friends. So I had to like get out and meet people like you guys and go around. Oh yes, and I, I've written a book. I've written three books. That's my second book. Ooh, very nice close up. Ooh. And that's Angela there. She was kind of my partner in crime on that, Angela Walters. But um, yeah, I had an idea to write a book and it turned into three ideas. So I've written three books and um, people always ask me, when's your next one coming out? And I'm like, I need to take a little break and breathe and sleep for like, you know, a week and then I'll probably work on some more stuff. But in a nutshell, I'm just a quilter like everybody else, but um, I get to do it for my job. So that kind of makes it a little more fun. So um, tell us what you're currently working on or designing right now. Okay, well, my, my super exciting news, you can kind of see a little peek of it behind me. I'm working on some quilts with some brand new fabric that's coming out in November with Benertex. It's called Modern Marks, and I think you guys might, you know, have a little inside, you know, a little insight into it. Might maybe, you know, wink, wink, honk, honk, try to come up with an idea. But um, you can see a little sneak peek of, you can't, probably can't tell too much, but this is one of the quilts that I just finished. It's actually a remake of one of the quilts on my book. I'll just kind of scrunch it up here with, it's just fun, really bright colors. So um, that was kind of fun to do. And so now I'm just in the midst of trying to put together some patterns and put together some more um, quilts so that when the fabric comes out, people are like, okay, what do I do with your fabric? And I'm like, well, here, make this pattern or make this pattern or make a pattern from you guys or, you know, do whatever you want with it. <laughs> well, and you also just had a book come out, right? Yes, I did. So that is this one right here. Ooh, piece and quilt with pre-cuts. So this is my third book, which I don't know if it's like backwards or not on the screen, but I'm actually doing a blog hop right now, and you guys are a part of it later on. Um, but basically, there's 11 quilts, and I'm showing my versions of the quilt right now on my blog, and then um, two or three people every day have made it in their own choice of fabrics, and some have made them smaller, and some have made them bigger. So that's really fun, too. And I don't know if you guys have checked your mail, but uh, I think I sent you guys a copy, so check your mail, because you might just get, help, get one in there if you haven't already. So that's a lot of fun, you know. Gosh, that's a snazzy t-shirt you're wearing too. What's that? Oh, can you see my shirt? Oh, here, here's my crafty commercial. Ooh, I told you, this is like the only clean t-shirt in my closet when I got home. They should they should send me like a promotion, but I have, I, I have a couple crafty classes and when I was filming um, the second class uh, earlier this year, I was so jealous because a lot of the, the studio guys were walking around and like they don't give their instructors t-shirts. It's like just for the studio people. And I was like, I want one of those shirts. And so then like the last day of filming, I go to my dressing room and there's a t-shirt for me. And so I was like, oh. So now I'm like, okay, I'll wear my crafty t-shirt, but it's really comfy. goes with my soft pants. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So what are your favorite techniques to use or teach? You've shown a okay, couple well, of your books. My favorite, uh, my all-time favorite, of course, is machine quilting because that's what my books are about. 
But I actually like all steps. So in all of my books and my patterns, not only do I teach machine quilting, but I also teach piecing because I want people to actually like make their whole quilt. But um, my little quick story I always tell when I'm going around and I'm teaching and stuff is um, I got to know Angela Walters, who I wrote the book with, because I took her long arm class because I thought, okay, if I'm going to be a serious quilter, if I'm going to be a professional quilter and write books and travel and teach, you know, yeah, I must have to get a long arm machine. And so I went around and I, I took all these classes and met all these awesome long armers. And I realized, you know what? They're amazing and I cannot long arm to save my life. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to teach what I know. I'm going to write what I know. And it's quilting on a regular home sewing machine. And so now people are like, are you ever going to get a long arm? I'm like, no, I can't quilt on a long arm. My arms are not long enough. So anyway, but I'm bump. Thanks for the loss. So I, will say I, I really think that if you learn on a domestic and you're really comfortable with that, it's, it's your bag. Like I really kind of learned on a long arm. So that's, that's my thing, but I don't quilt well on domestic. I'm horrible. Well, and some people, like Angela, like she started on a long arm, but then she started teaching and traveling and then like started doing craftsy and like people wanted to learn how to quilt on a domestic. So she taught herself to quilt on a domestic and now she's what I call um, quilting ambidextrous. Like she can go back and forth. And so like I can't. I Maybe if I like sat and like forced myself to, but it doesn't come natural to me. And so the main thing is I like having tried to quilt on a long arm and not being able to, it gives me a lot of um, empathy for my students that like have never quilted on a domestic. And so what I always tell them, I said, you know what? It's just as important to find out what you don't like as it is to find out what you do like. And at the end of the day, if you like quilting on a long arm or if you like hand quilting or if you like quilting by check or whatever, like if it's different than what I do, like it's totally fine. We'll still be friends and it'll be awesome. Yeah. I think that's true. I think that's so true. Cause I think that, uh, you know, I'm kind of, I'm okay on a domestic, but I'm definitely a long armor. And I've taken some classes that I'm like, I will never do this technique again, ever. Yeah. Exactly. You have to find out what you don't like because it's easier to cross things off a list and say, okay, well, I don't like this and I don't like that and I don't like this. And eventually, like if you're me and it takes you 20 years to finally whittle all that down, you finally figure out, oh, okay, maybe these one or two things, this is what I actually like and this is what I'm good at. So, you know, I always say give yourself a break. You know, some people are a lot faster at learning than I am. I just, it just took me a long time to figure it out. <laughs> So we want to get into our quirky questions. Okay. So three favorite foods that if you could only eat for the rest of your life, these three things, assuming that all your nutritional needs were met by, I don't know, a magic pill, three favorite foods. Oh, yummy. Well, I think I'm pretty balanced. So I love pizza, like gourmet pizza. And so that would be one. And it could be any kind, you know, fruit, veggie, meat, whatever. And I love ice cream because you got to have the ice cream with the pizza preferably Baskin Robbins, you know, any flavor. And then to balance that out, I love grilled vegetables. So any grilled vegetables, make it a meal. Pizza, ice cream, and veggies, and I'm good to go. And I can eat that probably the rest of my life. Oh, that's good. I, I don't know that I'm, I'm on your island with you, though. <laughs> that's okay. Then I don't have to share. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Um, so if you had a yacht that took you to this magical island, um, what would you name your yacht? Okay. I would love to have a yacht. So if people buy my book and I sell enough copies, I may, <laughs> <laughs> I've never been able to have a yacht. Um, I think that would be fun. You know what I would love to do? I would love to have a quilt retreat on a yacht. You know how they do like seminars at sea and they do like, you know, quilting cruises at sea or something. So I would probably either call it like the quilt retreat or maybe I would call it the quilting queen and I would like have retreats. So again, if you buy my yacht and if you pitch into my uh, <laughs> my sales thing, no, I'm just te teasing. We can all pitch in and we could buy one together. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> I'm in. I'm totally in. All right, pitch in five dollars and and we're there. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I would love. I've never been on a yacht, but I've been on I've been on boats and I've been on a cruise. But um, yeah, I think it'd be awesome to have a yacht with a retreat and like. I don't know, electric or battery powered sewing machine, or I guess you could have, you could have electricity on a yacht, right? Okay, yeah. so like set it all up. Okay, that's cool. And you know what? That might help your free motion quilting because like if you're waving around at sea, <laughs> you know, then you could just sit straight and it could quilt for you. That would be awesome. I should totally market that idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> like a gyroscopic mount for your sewing machine. 
So we should really hook up with like the sewing machine manufacturing people to like, because we uh, we bought this fancy cup holder for our riding lawnmower. Because yes, we live in the south and we have a riding lawnmower, and we needed a cup holder for it. <laughs> and it came with like this gyroscopic attachment of three different pivot points. So no matter how steep you were turning or any of that, your drink would stay upright. So you need that kind of mount for your sewing machine. That would be awesome. Well, have you guys seen the pictures on social media where people have like put um, little featherweights in their car and they like sew in the passenger side of their car while their husband's driving? That's pretty cool. <laughs> I drive I all the kids. travel a lot. I would love that. <laughs> I would get so car sick. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I just hand bind like I'll just I'll bring um that's another thing I love to do I love hand binding because when I'm sitting in the car we'll put on like an audiobook or something and you know we'll listen the kids are in the back and I'm just sitting there hand stitching hand binding it's awesome I don't ever have to drive my husband likes to drive and I sit and sew and we're happy <laughs> okay so this is my question because Pam makes fun of me but what's your favorite non-cuss cuss word okay I have I have two one I say all the time I say um fudge bucket you know for the f word and then I say ding a dang it all the time. Like if I stub my toe, say ding a ding it. And I, I uh, you know, I'm adult and I, I don't really swear. I did, all, I got all that out when I was, you know, in high school. And then once I became an adult, I didn't need to do that anymore. And I remember my son, who's now 20, when he was like, I don't know, three years old, I realized the value of being careful what you say. Because I remember like I stubbed my toe or something one time and I was like, oh, shoot. And the rest of the day, all day long, he went around saying, oh, shoot, oh, shoot. And I was like, Thank goodness I didn't say anything worse than that. So <laughs> be careful around, you know. But yeah, I like to make up words. It's fun. Yeah, we do fudge nuggets. Ooh, fudge nugget. Oh, I like that one. Can I borrow that from you? Absolutely. You can borrow yeah. a fudge bucket and I'll take fudge nugget and then we'll have a plethora of swear words to choose from. Yes. So you mentioned audiobooks in the car. What kind of stuff do you listen to or watch while you're sewing or, or stitching? Well, I listen to the Stitch TV show, of course, and it have to be a square, of course. So, no, I do. I love, um, I can't really watch TV while I'm sewing. I know some people can and I can't, but yeah, I, I have to be listening and I have like really good headphones. Um, so I love audiobooks and I love, um, I love quilting podcasts. I mean, that is really how I got to know you guys and stuff because I, oh, I have this funny story to tell. So I was listening to like Modern Society and then she led me to like Katie's Quilting Corner and then I think Katie led me to you or anyway, like these people would say, oh, I'm listening to Pam's podcast. And I'm like, who's this Pam person? Like, no one would ever say who you were. No one would ever say what the podcast was. And so finally, after like six months, somebody, because I couldn't just like Google, you know, who is Pam? Because that would be, you know, a million things. But somebody finally said it and said what your your thing was. And so then I went back and I found your podcast. And I listened to, I binge listened. Like, you got me through, I think you got me through my second book. Like, listening and stuff. Seriously, because I love listening to quilting podcasts because it's like I'm hanging out with friends, but I'm kind of an introvert. People don't know this, but I totally am. Like I can listen to friends and I don't have to talk back. So like, that's my kind of, that's like my best friendship. You talk to me and let me just chill out and I don't have to say anything back to you and we'd be best friends. So yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. One of the other gals is like, I hear you when you comment in your head. It's totally fine because I'll do that to you. I'll be like, oh, I'll comment in my head and, you know, they it'll go out there and they can hear it. So, but no, when I'm sitting there and I'm like on a deadline and I've got like 10 or 20 hours like of quilting that I have to do in like three days, like I can go through a lot of podcasts. <laughs> there are some quilts that I just recognize what audio book I was listening to when those quilts were made, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or what series of audio books I was listening to. Yeah, exactly. Or like you, I remember you said one time, like you quilt to Hamilton, which I haven't listened to yet. So right. I'm like, I have that too. Because I would, I would enjoy music. Like you could get some like soothing music to help you like stitch smoothly. Or if you're trying to like quilt to like a certain time, you could get some good like, you know, eight count music going or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I have to, I have to listen to something while I'm quilting or else I would go crazy. Yeah, same thing. I listen to either audiobook or uh, uh, music. Yeah. So very cool. So give us your social handles, website, anything new you want to tell everybody about. Okay. Well, I'm everywhere under Krista Quilts, and that's Krista with the C-H. Though, of course, I own all of them because people don't spell my name right. So I do own it with a C and an R and a K. And if there's another way of Krista out there that I don't know, I need to find it and I need to buy it too. 
But um, nothing's more funny than when someone will email me and my address, you can get a hold of me at my email. It's like Krista at KristaQuilts.com. And they'll say, Dear Krista, with a K. And I'm like, My name is in the address. But yeah, I'm everywhere at Krista Quilts. My um, website is KristaQuilts.com. And if you just Google me, you can find all sorts of fun stuff. So whatever social media is out there with my name on it, I'm, I'm, I'm on it. Awesome. And so are you most active on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter? Like, do you have a preferred platform? I like Instagram and I like my blog. And I know people will like shun me for this. I really don't like Facebook because it's clunky to me, but I'm on there because people like, because people are on there. Um, but my favorite thing on Facebook is I have a group called Quilt with Krista. And that's fun because it's interactive and like people can post pictures and we can hang out and stuff like that. But yeah, mostly I love to blog a couple times a week and I love being on Instagram because I can just put out pretty pictures and it's, it's easier to, it's easier to see everything on Instagram, I think so. And, and Twitter, I think I'm on Twitter. Like, people follow me and I get notifications. I think, like, five years ago, my husband set it up that, like, my Instagram and my blog goes to Twitter, but I've never actually been on Twitter. I know I have followers there, but I've never actually gone on there, but I'm there virtually, so you can probably find me there, too. <laughs> yeah, that's how it usually works for me, unless I have, like, a brilliant thing I want to say, but more anonymous than Facebook. And then I go on there for 140 characters and I'm off again. That. Yeah, exactly. So I just, I like the pictures. I like what people can share on, on Instagram and, and stuff like that. And I just, yeah, I just can't, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm one of those people, like I don't do well with video games because I don't like clutter. If there's visual clutter all over the page, I get lost. And that's why I feel like on Facebook, I'm like, where am I? Am I on my page? Am I in my group? And what's the stuff on the side? And what's that stuff? And so I just, I don't do well. It kind of ties in with my minim, minimalist personality. Like I like blank screens and blank walls. And I like, you know, I like it where there's not that much you have to look at. So I'm just weird that way. <laughs> no, it's cool. Awesome. Well, Chris, it's been great getting to, well, we've known you, but it's great to let everyone else get to know you. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us. I know. So when I met you guys in person, like, did you think I would be like, like taller, shorter? You know, a lot of people, people are like, oh, I didn't realize you were that short. I get that. I get that all the time. That's right. Well, that's right. Remember, we made the Pam sandwich, like you and yes, me, with Pam in the exactly. middle, because you and I were like the bookends. Yeah. So if people haven't met me and they've met you, I'm close to her height. Yeah, you're like, yeah, there you go. I can say I'm the same height as Lynn. The yeah. one thing I don't really like, because I'm five foot nothing. And so like, that's like nothing. And I'm like five, two in heels. Um, and it's funny because I don't, I've never minded being short, but when I'm next to somebody who's my height or like five, one, I'm like, oh my gosh, am I really that short? Like, cause I'm loose, used to looking up and it's no big deal. But when I'm next to someone, my height, I'm like, oh, I guess I really am that short. <laughs> yeah, I'm like five two. I'm not. I'm a yes, little. You're towering tall. over me, man. You are towering over me. <laughs> I'm not that tall, but I tell everybody I'm fun size. So there you fun go. Size. That's I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> We're fun size. And I'll have to stretch out because if I, you know, if I get older and like how your bones like tighten up, I'm like I don't want to lose an inch. I don't want to be like under five feet tall when I get older. But it's fun. But you know what? When I when I quilt, my legs dangle, so I always have to put like a box under there. You know, that's why I tell people in class. Like, if you don't have ergonomics, just put a box under your feet if your legs dangle like they do on mine. <laughs> yep. Totally do that. Totally get it. Understand. Y'all are cute. Mm. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hey, I'm super tall. Well, I'm not super tall. What's strange is, and I'm sure you have this, Krista, where your kids are now getting or your height or have surpassed your yeah. height. That's yeah, my daughter's almost 14. And I told her somewhere in the next year, she's going to pass me in height and she cannot wait because they all love my boys, of course, are towering over me now. And then I'm like, I will be the smallest in my family. And that's fine. But I, I tell them I will still look up to them and tell them what to do like that. You know, <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this interview. You can check out more on the playlist and we'll talk to you again soon. All right, Bye. Talk to you. Bye.